Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Stratwatch. So here we go again, it's time to bring you uh, more Stratosphere data. Of course we are including Stratosphere data in the 10 to 14 days uh, as well. Now we're into winter. Um, but uh, we will carry on doing the uh, weekly look at the Stratosphere. So we're going to be having a look at both GFS and ECM uh, data. And uh, I should get on that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. I'm going to be live at 6 p.m. with our 10 to 14 day. Maybe that will include Shasta days as well, who knows. But we'll be live at 6 with our 10 to 14 day. No, I, I shall see you a little bit later on for that one. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everybody, for doing that for Gav's weather vids. Right, so the current situation in terms of uh, stratospheric temperatures looks like this. Uh, this came from the JMA, of course. So the black line shows where the temperature 10 APA in the stratosphere over the pole has been. And where we currently are against the average, which, of course, is the grey line. So, of course, about a week ago, or a few days ago, we did get our first sort of minor warming of stratosphere uh, that occurred at 10 HPA over the North Pole. Nothing, you know, a, a, a significant, really, other than to slightly displace the polar vortex a little bit and its roots. Um, but certainly nowhere near the level that could be considered an SSW or have really any sort of uh, tropospheric impact. We're currently ticking the temperature down now a little bit at 10 HPA, so you have a that black line has it gone down from where it was, which was at around minus 60, back down now to around minus 65. That's still above average, though, for this point in December. We'd normally expect to be around here, which is somewhere around minus 72 or minus 73. So we are still above average with temperature at 10 HPA, all bit ticking down slightly. Going a bit lower down to 30 HPA, but we can see we have had a bit of a tick up as well. So at one point, um, around the turn of a month, we did get down to uh, minus 80 at uh, 30 HPA, which is closer to the troposphere, uh, of course. Then we lifted up close to average, so we went up to what would that be about minus 76, maybe something like that. Um, we have ticked that down ever so slightly again. Oh, I think we're around minus 77 now. So, um, yeah, we're very close to average show at 38 PA. We have lifted up from that really cold stratosphere temperature of minus 80, but we have uh, around the turn of the month. And as I said, 10 8 PA, we are actually uh, a little bit above average. So this is how uh, temperatures are currently uh, predicted by BGFS. It's just in the middle of updating from the 18Z to the, um, from the 12Z to the 18Z. So, of course, these blue and purple colours here, these are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA at their roots. Minus 80 over on the um, European and Atlantic side of the Arctic. Over the Arctic itself, you know, uh, around minus, uh, minus 68, minus 70, nothing like that, where we've got those deep blue colours, or minus 65 to minus 70, I suppose. Uh, right, so let's run through, see what's predicted to happen. So, I think the temperature is going to get a bit colder, I think, actually, over the pole. So, see how these blue colours are sort of pushing back a little bit from the European side and the Atlantic side in towards the pole. So, the temperature is probably dropping a bit over the North Pole itself, actually, over the next few days. But won't be too far from average again. And then that takes us on 20th of December. Another sort of min minor-ish warming taking place over Siberia, trying to push into the North Pole. These my warnings having no impacts in their own terms. All they might be doing is helping to, uh, you know, sort of uh, soften up the PV a little bit, niggle at it, and, uh, and, and move it around slightly to perhaps soften it up for a more significant warming that could occur later on in winter. It's still very, very early days to talk about any kind of warming of the stratosphere, really. Um, you know, these uh, warming events are much more likely later on in the winter. So we're up to and beyond day 10 now. Again, nothing overly dramatic going on. Still keeping those blue colours displaced more towards the Atlantic European side of the Arctic. We're talking about a little bit uh, warmer over on the Pacific and um, over on the Pacific side of the Arctic and, and the Siberian side of the Arctic, I suppose. Now, right at the very end of the GFS 12Z run, but using for this video, we get quite a significant warming beginning to start picking up over Mediterranean, and that looks like going to have a go at pushing up in towards Siberia. It doesn't reach anywhere near the level of a sudden stratospheric warming. The GFS and its ensembles at the moment flirting with the possibility of a significant warming 
of the stratosphere late December. I think that's a bit early. So I would place, um, or well, for our winter forecast anyway, we should place um, the uh, chance of an SSW sort of middle of the winter. So that would be kind of mid January, early to mid January, but particularly like middle of January. Um, is when we kind of place it. So I think I think the uh, GFS operationals and its ensembles with with this um, flirting with an SSW is just to get Pat begin to pick up on the possibility of that happening. But I think I think being progressive with it and and it will end up being. Um, uh, in, in, in in a few more weeks time nevertheless we do see a bit of warming over Mediterranean it's trying to push up in towards uh, Russia as well so um, we'll just keep an eye on on that but last year you remember we had the GFS flirting with SSW starting around Christmas last year last winter and um, it didn't actually we didn't actually get an SSW until well into February so <laughs> um, let's just wait and see what happens over the next uh, few weeks now, this is the uh, 10 HPA temperature anomaly forecast from the extended EC42 day up. So, uh, again, we can see we've got, you know, we are above average with the temperature over on the Siberian side um, next week. This is for the 18th to 25th of December. So, over on the Siberian side and the Pacific side, around towards uh, west parts of Canada, above average temperature anomalies through there on the scale. We're going to deep break up, which is 10 degrees above average. So you look about big probably having an SSW. We know from this though, but we're not having an SSW here. So so that that we see there is is basically let's go back to basically about warming that we see there. So, I mean, it's slightly above average, but it's nowhere near the level of an SSW. So, you always have to be very careful with these anomaly charts, because they only go out to 10 degrees above average. So, that probably is 10 degrees or more above average, right? I mean, like 15 degrees above average, I don't know. But, um, it's not going to lie... 40, 50, 60 degrees above average, which is the level you've got to get to for it to be a proper SSW, if you see what I mean. So these look a little bit more dramatic a lot of the time than they actually are, and you've got to try and work out whether whether it's a minor warming that you see in there or whether it is actually SSW. Now, that looks a little bit more impactful, I have to say. That's the 25th and 7th to the 1st January, Chris Day to New Year's Day. That really does look a little bit SSW-esque. It's a very large um, area of above average temperature. It's all the way from, like, North American Canada right the way over towards um, Russia and, you know, covering the Arctic as well. From here, um, now that's, I uh, say, Christmas Day, Tuesday. Day. So from here, we can see we have got this warming through, through the bed, but might well push up into uh, Russia, but falling that falls well short of an SSW um, as well. So, um, but that does look quite impactful, I have to say, for week two. Week three also looking pretty impactful as well with that one. That's the first of the 8th of January. Then it starts shrinking as we go through to week uh, four and week five is 15th and 2nd of January. And a rather shrunken area of uh, of uh, warm and average temperature anomalies that we see there. So within within that five week period, is are, or are we going to get an SSW? Um, I think you know that looks m most like it, and maybe that week as well. So Christmas, so like Christmas Day to the eighth of January, that looks most like like it. But uh, I'm not I'm not sure if that will reach genuine SSW temperature levels. No way of looking at polar vortex is through the zone of wind at 10 HPA. So this is the forecast again from the EC extended. So we are now weaker with the zone of wind. That first warming that we have, uh, you know, uh, about a week ago and slight displacement, that has been enough to weaken the zone of wind now slightly below average. This thick red line here is, uh, is where you'd expect us to be in terms of strength of zone of wind at this uh, point of the year. But we are a little bit weaker in terms of the uh, polar vortex now. But still pretty strong, you know, still quite a strong vortex. Um, no, I think blue lines on sub of mean that reduces further into the new year, though goes nowhere near like reversal. So this line here is very important, this zero line. That's uh, anything that's under about is like reversing the zone of wings, and that would be via uh, a genuine uh, sudden stratospheric warming event. So the ensemble mean goes nowhere near that. And basically, it continues to be as it has been over the past two or three weeks. So we've got several members of the ECM 42-day ensemble plume that are sending zone of winds in reverse, that are going for a genuine sudden stratospheric warming event with a reversal 
and so wings. But of course, you can't discount these on top of blue rebels up here. But I keep him as a wing. Uh, pretty quite strong, strengthening it actually further as we go into the middle part of January. So because we've got like um, some on some blue rebels that are strengthening the polar vortex on the wing, some that are sending it into reverse, and some are weakening it but not reversing it, um, it means that the uh, overall ensemble mean just sort of flat lines away here. At yes, weaker than average level, actually quite, quite, um, you know, quite, quite, quite significantly weaker than average level, but not getting to a reversal of zonal winds. So, it remains to be seen what's going to happen here. The GFS ensembles and operation runs are sort of flirting with the possibility of an SSW, but not going for it convincingly. Um, the ECM, there is um, those warm and average temperature anomalies over Christmas and New Year. Very difficult because it only goes to 10 degrees above average or more. You can't say how far that or more is going. Um, you know, it's very difficult to say whether the ECM uh, is actually forecasting a reversal of zone winds or not. But from the from the um, uh, zone of wind forecast here, it looks as though um, you know we're probably going to see a weakening, but maybe not a reversal up to the middle of January. As I say, these SSW events get more likely the further on you go through the uh, winter so we may be kept waiting to february as we said in winter forecast if we get to february and uh um, and we haven't had the ssw event when it does occur because we think it will occur this season when it does occur it's going to have more of an impact on the spring probably uh right so back what you update with everything stratosphere wise we're going to keep monitoring we'll keep looking as well as doing strat watch every wednesday we will be including strat days from 10 to 14 days too and talking to 10 to 14 day um you're going to be back later on live stream uh today's 10 to 14 day so i shall see you at 6 p.m for that for this week's strat strat watch mode that's all for now and thanks so much